I'm Coach Sandra Proctor, and I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise a star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Ch- Welcome back to another fire episode and season three of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right. We're talking rising stars in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And y'all can see it on the shirt below me, ladies and gentlemen. Highly ACC, stand up and make some noise. We got a rising coach in the nation who is doing big things. Ten years coaching in the game. But now she is the head coach of the women's basketball program. Let's make some noise for the head coach of Highland CC, Coach Sandra Proctor. Welcome to the show, Coach. How are you doing? I'm good. Y'all, the intro is amazing. I love it. I need y'all to come to the home games. Hey, we we can do it too, Coach. We had a great good time. We'll be there. We'll turn up for you, Coach. Listen, I love it. Hey, well, well, check this out, Coach. If this is all y'all who are joining us for the first time, we want to say thank y'all so much for checking out the program, checking out the platform. We've been working hard. It, said, it took us three years to get here, but we couldn't do it without you. So we want to thank you and welcome all of our new visitors and listeners in. With that being said, I am your host, The Mouth of the South, B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. Put your L's up, Mr. Yeet is in the building and Ryan rocking alongside my brother from another mother the other side of the commanded logo y'all see him the choir storm the head coach KT Kev how you feeling today man I'm feeling great B. Jones but uh, coach seems like she's a straight shooter B. Jones I'm, I'm a little nervous this episode man no 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 no, no. it's a good time that's what we gonna have here ain't got time to play with y'all that's what she said <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> we got started. Coach, is that, a neck? is that a whistle around your neck right now, Coach? No, I, it's a, uh, oh, it's a okay. I thought Kevin was going to run lines. Oh, man, I can't run no lines. I'm tired, Coach. I can't do it today. I'm sorry. No, we practiced, at, we practiced at 6 this morning, so that whistle been gone. Yikes. God, oh. hey, well, check this out, coach. You know what you got to do when you get started on this program. We don't go nowhere without honoring the rules. Hey, reach over your right shoulder, coach. All right, pull that strap across and buckle up because this thing is about to be nuts. We're about to go bananas. Check this out, Holland. We want to thank everybody out here from Denver, from, from, from out there who's watching this show. We want to thank you one more time because we, we humble and we want to stay humble. We can't do it without you. But we got to ask a quick favor. We got to ask a small favor. It won't cost you any money whatsoever. On the count of three, I'm going to do a lot of hooting and hollering. And I need y'all to do me three quick favors. One, I need you to smash that subscribe button. Become a part of our network. Become a part of the Sports Life Talk family. Help us to grow this major conglomerate. Number two, we need you to hit that like button so this show can go into the algorithm. Whether you Google her or you Google us, guess what? That show bowling up to the top. Right now, you're going to see Coach Sandra Proctor right there at the top of the algorithm. And then lastly, lastly, Sharon is caring. We know it ain't December quite yet, but we almost to the holiday season. We need you to share this show. Take that link, throw it in your WhatsApp, your, your Facebook page, throw it in your, your group message with your Memo and your kinfolk and your play cousins, all of them, right? And let them know about this amazing show that you saw and that you want to put them on game. Can, hey, Coach Coach Proctor, can your folks do that for us? Or are they going to rock absolutely, alongside us? Absolutely. Absolutely. I got a whole bunch of people like y'all better so all right here we go on the count of three let's do it like we true to it one two three boom 
Yeah! I love this part of the show, Kevin. I get hyped up because now we got all these new family members and we just getting all this love and I can just hear the ding, 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 ding. I can't even sleep tonight because my phone going off. That's what I'm saying. I love it. Welcome all of y'all to the show. If you did smash that subscribe button or if you did any of those actions, throw us a fire emoji down in the chat. Let us know you out there so we can just properly reach out, shake your hand and introduce ourselves to you and tell you how much we appreciate you. But without further ado, Coach SP, Sandra Proctor, are you ready? For the yes, sports sir. life talk initiation. Yes, sir. All right, let's go, KT. You said Mima. I haven't heard Mima in a in a while, B. Jones. That kind of threw me off. I'm trying to keep my composure because it was kind of funny. All right, coach, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. All right, so number one, just all time favorite, Anita Baker. Uh, Whitney Houston, number two. Little Wayne has always had just a, a soft spot in my heart, so he's number three. Um, Jay Z number four, J Cole number five. Yeah, that's a burner. That's a burner. Ooh, the black is definitely hot. All right, Coach, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. But there's no way with the list. First, you hit us off with Anita Baker and Whitney Houston, so you were cheating Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. You said Whitney, you already took it to another level. Jay Z. Lil Wayne, J. Cole, B. Jones, I know she's been in the game, what, 10 years? Yeah. No, I got to give you more than 10. We're giving her 17 for that. I don't know why I picked 17. <laughs> give her 17, B. Because you an Anita Baker fan, that's why. I love, I I love it. Love it. And concert and everything. Love it. Love that's it. why he gave you 17, though, Coach, because he'll be a true, true Anita Baker fan. Because I knew I was wrong. It is. So I, I sing you this song. You this song. <laughs> All right, Coach. So, who is your favorite superhero and why? So, my answer is a little bit different, um, but I'd say Ninja Turtles. Um, Teenage Mutant. I, I love the Ninja Turtles too. Which one, though? You got yeah, to give them. us one of them. Who is I don't, it? It's not one. I like all four of them. And of course, the new movie just came out. So I took my daughters and I took my godson. Now my godson is a huge Ninja Turtles fan. I think his favorite is Raphael, though. So I'll say Raphael for him. Well, coach. Raphael is a troublemaker, though, Coach. You got to be careful with that. My godson. He's the rebel. He's the rebel. He's the rebel. But coach, that movie was actually pretty good, wasn't it? I was like, I was like, what? I'm ready for the next one. See, I gotta go see it because the way it was drawn kind of threw me off, and I was like, man, yeah, I don't know. No, it was really good for sure. You get, I loved it. You get past the drawing about seven minutes <laughs> in, and then you won't, you won't get it. Is a little looking up. Weird, yeah. but I'm like, ah. This is a little creepy at first, but the storyline is amazing, dog. You know, I'm gonna go check it out on Sunday. All right, so since every uh, superhero has their own theme music and we consider you a superhero coach, with that said, what would your theme song be? So, um, again, Lil Wayne has always been a big favorite of mine. So, Tunchi Rolling by Lil Wayne is a song that I listen to probably every day before practice. Um, so, I would say that would be my theme song. <laughs> coach is kind of hard, B. Jones. I'm going to sit back and <laughs> talk too much noise because she keeps... She said Tunchi. She went to Tunchi, not Lil Wayne. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them, they could be the dead or alive. Who would they be and why? So, I actually have two. Um, I think the first one kind of goes without any reason, but Pat Summit for sure. Um, I got a chance to volunteer with a, a coach who played for her in Tennessee, and I, I learned a lot from her. Um, and Don, uh, Don Staley, of course, is my second. I, I don't know anybody that wouldn't want to be able to sit and watch what Coach Staley does. Have you got a chance to meet uh, Coach Staley? I met her when I was 16 years old, and it was the scariest experience of my life because she was so, like, stone-faced, like, oh, you want my autograph here? I was like, okay, thank you. But, no, I, I met her then. Um my brother is a head coach, so he got to take pictures with her and sent me pictures of them together. Uh, but I I think she's amazing. I was a fan when she was at Charlotte, uh, at Temple. And, of course, you know, who can't be a fan now? Well, two out of the three people on this show has met Yeah, Don. yeah I, I actually met Don Staley, too. K Kevin, have you, have you met Don Staley? All right, Coach. So what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when, we, when you're not on the court? 
Um, you got to persevere. Um, it's not always going to be easy, but it's always going to be worth it in the end. So what's the best basketball movie of all time? Oh, man. Um, I must say these are my two favorites, um, but uh, it's got to be a tie between He Got Game or Above the Rim. Ooh. I like both of them. You see how Coach is cheating my initiation. I asked her for one. She gave me two. Hey, she killing it, so, though. The like reason that game, too, is I – despise loving basketball. I'm not a loving basketball fan at all. So I was like, I gotta give two so that they don't ask me about that. I'm not too happy okay. with your answer, just then. No, I'm moving on. <laughs> so, because I got basketball and I got Sonali late in one movie, be a uh, coach. You can't do me like that. You're right. All right. So later on in the show, we're gonna play our version of Would You Rather. All right, so I'm going to give you a little sample, a real simple sample, because it would be nothing like this later on. Would you rather be a singer or a dancer? Um, I don't think I'd do either one well, but I guess a uh, dancer. <laughs> I guess that would be the one I'd pick. I just see how this show going to go for me later on, B. Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good. I'm Good. Here's your goal. Just time for the dancers to step out of the shadows. Right. Listen. <laughs> yeah, she's taking the Ninja Turtle. Too far at stepping yeah, out of the shadows, always, whatever. Always in there getting it. Yeah, they were. All right, so B and I, we're going to produce a movie centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actress. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what her name is, but she was the mom in um, Above the Rim. <laughs> I feel like she would be the best one. Oh. I have no idea what her name is. I don't she remember the mom either. I don't, she I don't was remember very her name. No nonsense. She kept Kyle in check. Like, I, mom was, was the superhero in that movie. So I'm going to say her, especially because I have two daughters. So I always got to pull that whip out. <laughs> Are you looking it up, B? Yeah, I think, I think her name is Tanya Pinkins. Yes. Tiny right. opinions. I, I was I was going I was going over budget, KT. I was gonna go ahead and give a Viola Davis. You know, I said I said let's just go. Yeah, I, I wanna say Viola. I, I, so I, 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 I might be I might not be on her level, but I would so <laughs> I mean it, it, it's not about you being on a level. We gotta have the budget for a Viola Davis. <laughs> you, <laughs> you definitely don't have that. Yeah, that's semantics. <laughs> Whatever me. All right, so when we come out there to check your team out. B. Jones and I, first of all, we love to travel. So when we travel, we got to eat. So when we get there, what's that one food spot that you would recommend and what's your go-to meal there? So I'm going to cheat on this one a little bit because we're in a really small town. So we legitimately have one kind of major restaurant in town that's called Kirkwood. Um, My go-to is, you know, anything chicken from there. So whether it's tenders, whether it's wings, but I have the luxury of having a fiance that's a chef. So I'm going to say you would have to come to my house and have my fiance make you her lemon pepper wings. I think you would be highly pleased by the lemon say pepper wings. Say less. Say <laughs> bring, we bring in the paper plates, the plastic cups. Yeah, I, all of that. All of that wait. with the red drink. All of that. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, the, the red drink. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, bring us yeah, my fiance's from Louisiana, so that's definitely a, an coach, It's making sense. Everything. No wonder why y'all clicking like this. It makes <laughs> perfect sense. We can vote, Coach. Oh, man. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Monroe. That's where my fiance is from. Hey, tell your fiance it's stank over there, though. They got that paper. <laughs> <mail>. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, everybody, remember, like, Shh, don't tell them it's yeah, a paper bill. All right, so I gotta, I gotta wait till dinner's ready and then I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> no that. doubt. <laughs> all right, so if you hit that subscribe button or think about doing so, please do leave us your top five music artists, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, go to our website, B Jones. Where's that website at? Point to them for it. SLTUGotNext.com to learn more about us and other You Got Next family members. Now allow me to turn over to B as he tells you more about our newest play cousin, Coach Proctor. So B. Joe, go ahead and take it away, brother. Coach Proctor, Sandra Proctor, how you doing today, Coach? Thank you so Hi. much. 
I'm good. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, uh, we 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 so excited about having you on here, and it's it's even crazy that you 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 talked about your brother. We're gonna talk a little bit about about <laughs> your brother oh, on this show. You come from a family of coaches, which I know that it's tough to it's tough to kind of be in that type of environment. But uh, we got to talk a little bit about the dynamics of growing up. So so you know what? Before we before we go into where you are now, we got to talk about the past, Coach. Tell us about your basketball journey, and uh, when did you fall in love with the game of basketball? So I was, oh man, I was probably like nine or 10. Uh, I know I was in the third grade, but I, I lived in a neighborhood where I was one of like two girls that played basketball. And we had a big park where everybody would go play throughout the summer. And you had to figure out a way to hold your own. Like nobody was taking it easy. Everybody was getting bullied. And it was, you either got to find a way to make it, or if you end up losing, you might not make it back on this court. Um, and, you know, being nine years old and playing against, you know, 16, 17 year olds, it, you know, you just got to figure out a way to hold your own. And I was a shooter. So that was always my gift. Um, I didn't hit a growth spurt until like sixth grade. So I was tiny. So I was like, if I can shoot and just hurry up and get back down the court, I'll be okay. So that was kind of what turned me into the shooter that I was in high school and in college. Um, me and all my siblings played for uh, Denver East High School. Um, you know, my brothers all have championships. Unfortunately, me and my sister don't have one. Um, but, you know, we all kind of played in that era that, you know, 2002 to 2008, where, you know, especially in Colorado, girls basketball was crazy. We had Abby Wainer, who was the national player of the year. Um, you know, Ann Strother that played for UConn was there. Um, Faye Mueller that played for UNLV was there. So we had some heavy hitters coming out. So again, it was either you figure out a way to last on this court or we'll see you later. So that was always kind of our basketball thing. Now, coach, they say they say you don't never lose that jumper. You still, you still, well, you still got that the jumper. Jumper. The jumper's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you still got you still got that wet thing, you know, coach. Absolutely. Hey, I tell all my players, you can't outshoot me. You can outrun me all day, but you will never outshoot me. Now, Coach, I love that energy because when me, me, Kevin and I, we go out next summer, we call it the Mamba Tour. Kevin is going to do a, 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 a contest against every coach we go see. Look, yo, look over there fixing his face, Coach. coach Kevin, <laughs> Kevin has set himself up to have a shoot-off against every head coach, every no, athlete. You, you have said up to have a shootout against every yeah, country. Great job, me. <laughs> yeah, he the one that. <laughs> so, coach, you gonna smoke him? You you gonna do? You gonna work? Listen, there, it's, there, it's no hard feelings, Kev. I promise you. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta take that dub. I have to. <laughs> we'll see about that, coach. We'll see about that. <laughs> I may take it easy on you, coach. So you know, I want to, you know, have a good meal later on. So you know, I may take it easy. Listen, she'll be cheering against me anyway, so <laughs> it's all good. Now, Coach, tell us how did you go from being a, a shooter, uh, you know, playing ball, a rough style of ball, sound like you came up when, you know, it wasn't no ticky-tack fouls. You no, know, you, you took a charge. You took a charge. You might come up with your nose bleeding in your, in your era. But, uh, but Coach, what, what made you convert and, and drop the ball and pick up the whistle? Um, so I started, I actually moved. I, um, I graduated from Shaw University. Um, I moved up to Pennsylvania. And I was like, I'm not going to play up here, but I still want to be involved somehow. And I just kind of just randomly was like, maybe I could find a high school to just help out with. Um, and shout out to Coach Lee. You know, he gave me my start, gave me my opportunity to, to actually get my foot in the door. Um, and I actually got an opportunity to coach for Alyssa Thomas's parents um, with Central PA Elite because of him. So that kind of opened up everything for me. Um, you know, we had an okay year our first year. And then I was like, nah, we about to, I need some championships. And we went on like a 68 and 15 run over three years. God, duh. Yeah, we, we were out there giving people work. Um, and, you know, we, my third year, we lost in the championship. Um, my fourth year, we actually came back and won it. So and we got knocked out right before the state championship in that case. So, um, you know, if it's not for Coach Lee and if it's not for, you know, our whole staff, we had, you know, a Stony Book graduate. We had a Duquesne graduate. We had a Morgan State graduate. 
all on our staff. So we had what I think is the best staff in the state of Pennsylvania. But, you know, we got championships, so can't nobody take that away from us. Now, Coach, it's very rarely we, we get a lot of crazy stories of people starting in different points and how they got into the coaching. It's just it's unique to every single coach. It's kind of like your your thumbprint uh, almost to say, right, how you identify your story. But I got to ask, we, we very rarely get individuals who coached at all three phases, in my opinion. You know, you coached at high school, AAU and in the college level. What What is the dynamic between those three different levels and how did you have to kind of change your coaching style? to fit all three different different uh, di- different levels? I think it changed the older I got. When I first started, I was 25. I had a whole bunch of energy. I'm running up and down with these kids. I'm yelling and screaming. I'm 36 now. <laughs> I don't have it in me. So I think the older I got, I just, and from being around older coaches, they were just like, one day you'll get sick of it. Like one day you'll stop yelling, it'll come. But for right now, you're young. Um, and I think it just kind of changed with the time. And I mean, of course, players are different now. Um, so my first year, I had a kid go to Providence. I had a kid go to Robert Morris. Um, so I can yell at those kids a little bit more than I could probably yell at a kid that this is her first year playing AAU. Right. Um, so it just kind of it gets tailored basically to who I'm coaching. Um, so even right now, I have some kids I can get on, and then I have some kids I got to take it a little bit easier on them. So. Each kid gets the same respect, gets the same energy, but it just might come out a little bit differently. Now, you over at Highland Community College, but to me, you had to take some risk in order to go there because you was at Northeast. You you played at Northeast. You got the opportunity to come back and coach at Northeast. You could have sat there, waited your opportunity, and took over the head coaching at, at your alarm when you got the chance, but you went on and, and took that opportunity to head over to Highland. What, what made you uh, make that decision? A couple things took place um, at Northeastern, and I, I love the school. Like I'm an alum. I was there for three years, um, you know, coached there for a semester, loved it, loved all the kids. But, you know, just some things happen, and I feel like I'm a big person that agrees that you have to be able to advocate for yourself. And I felt like if I can't show my players what it looks like to advocate for themselves, I'm never going to be able to tell them that they need to do it. Whoa. So it was a, I won't say adversity, but it was a little, a little bit of a change that I didn't see coming. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, I'm going to kind of put my name out there. If something comes up, great. If nothing does, I had every intention on staying, but, you know, God saw other plans for me. So here I am at Highland. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about the expectations and what we're going to get out of Highland. But you mentioned the brother. You thought I was going to let you off the hook. No, I ain't let you off the hook. You you talked about coming up with coaches around you and how the best staff in Pennsylvania. But how how is that being in a family with a a head coach that's at a major program uh, right there in your corner? And how hard is that to to, to follow into that, you know, I don't want to say footsteps. I guess I'm trying to find a word to, to kind of follow in that. Footsteps. <laughs> footsteps for sure. Um, my, my older brother is, he's always been somebody I've looked up to, whether it's being a player, being a coach. Um, and I've kind of watched his career. We've coached for the same amount of years. He's just done all of his at the college level. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've learned from them. I've called them when I had questions about, you know, what do you do against this defense? You know, what's y'all practice plan look like for tomorrow? Like, so I've I've picked his brain for years. There's times where I get on his nerves and I know. um, But, you know, he got the opportunity to become a head coach this summer as well. So it was definitely a big thing to be able to see, you know, this person that I looked up to and that I've been around my whole life you know, kind of step over into what I feel like has kind of been destined for him his whole coaching career. Um, And now he gets to do it in a program that loves him, that respects him, and that, you know, he has high goals for. So I'm I'm excited to see what he does, and I'm definitely going to pull a little bit from him. Now, now, for those, some people walk, watching this, they, they probably ride along in their cars like, who is her brother? What school he is? So, so introduce, introduce your brother and tell him what school he is. My brother is Pierre Curtis. He is the head women's coach at Furman University. 
Now, Coach, you know the you know the history with Sports Life Talk behind that, huh? You know it's off. You know we, we kind of got a part in him playing, him getting that head coach. I'm just joking with you, Pierre. I'm gonna say I'll, everybody said they had a part in it. I had a part in it. <laughs> coach Curtis, hey, Coach Curtis, probably throwing the eraser at, at the dry board. Like, what the, what, what they talking about? Nah, real talk. Real, we're, we're talk. It's a joke though because we had Jackie Carson on our show she was the head coach at Furman yeah. at the time she got promoted because you know we say we say we sprinkle a little something on your career so that opened up the opportunity for a head coaching spot to come at Furman that's all I was saying yeah that's all, that's all I was saying <laughs> Jackie Jackie is amazing um True. I had a chance to meet her a couple times um of course going to watch games and she's done an amazing job and kind of preparing him to take over for this program and I don't think it's any other person that she would have chosen to be her successor other than my brother. Now, now the question Kevin asked you earlier today is, could you coach your, your older self or your younger self? But I want to I want to rephrase that. I want to rephrase okay. that. Could you coach on your brother's staff? How, what, what would that be like to get that opportunity to be an assistant coach on your <laughs> brother's staff? We've talked about it. We do not think we would coach well together. We talk way too much trash. Like I don't I don't think the professionalism would be able to be there with us coaching together. So I think we're in a good spot where we can both kind of coach in our lanes and just kind of pick from each other. But I don't I don't foresee us ever being able to coach together. We just we we bicker too much. I don't yeah, think yeah. players do that. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your head coach and girl, Ori, because it is time. It is time for, for so that's crazy. Both of y'all got a promotion in the same summer. I, I know, I know, it's something in that in that bloodline right now, y'all. I bet there's some other good things happening because y'all cooking this summer. But what, what what what's the plan for these holidays? What what's, what's up? What what, what y'all gonna do on this basketball court? What can we expect to see out of this team? Listen, so the um, Highlands always had a really successful program, so that's something that we definitely want to continue. Um, they've won, I think, 19 games the last three seasons. They finished third in the conference the last three seasons. Um, I don't want to jinx us, but I would definitely like for us to hit that top two spot. Um, but we should have a chance to host our conference tournament this year. Um, and I've always I've been telling the girls, like, I don't want to see another team win a game on this floor, whether it's non-conference, conference, playoff. Like, I don't want to see it. And I've had to do that. Like, I've had to watch another team win a championship and had to sit and watch them get their medals, and I have no desire to do that. So I've been kind of driving that in on our girls. Um, they know I'm big on running. They know I'm big on defense. Um, so aside from everything else, we're going to score regardless. But if we can't stop anybody else from scoring, that's going to be a problem. Um, so that's been our biggest focus um, coming into the season is being able to defend, being able to get after people and pressure people, especially in this Jayhawk conference. Now, 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 see, Kevin, that flip came on. We got coach, coach started coaching today, right there. She, she, she went in basketball mode real quick. And we finna get I had to, real quick. I'm, I'm out of it, though. <laughs> We're going to run. We're going to run. We're going to put some points on the board. No, nah, Coach, it. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love that energy, and we can't wait to see your girls play. But I got to ask, Coach, because you, you was kind of serious backstage. You 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 know, you told Kevin to get on that line a couple of times that he's going to be running tonight. But my question to you is, is how would your team, the players and your and your coaches, how would they talk about Coach Proctor? Like, if we, if we were able to interview them in a room where you had the earphones on and you couldn't hear them, what would they say about Coach Proctor? <laughs> I think when they first and this situation I'm in now is a little bit different because I only know three of the players. Um, the other girls were recruited by the previous coach. So they're in a position where they're getting to know me just as much as I'm getting to know them. Um, the three girls that I know, though, two of them, I coached their freshman year in high school. So now I think they've gotten to see the transition I've made from being that person that just yelled and screamed to being a person that, it's going to get my point across, but I'm going to do it in a, in a calmer way. Um, I think they would still be like, she's crazy. <laughs> she <don't, laughs> she's eccentric. I'm passionate. I think that's something they would definitely say. But I'm also understandable. I'm a parent. So I know, you know, everything can't be basketball 1,000% of the time. Um, so there's going to be times. I have a player that's sick right now. So I'm texting her all day. Like, are you okay? Did you go to the doctor? What they say? Just come see me if you if you're not if you don't got the flu come see me if you got the flu right, go lay right. down. Um, but I mean I, I think they'd say I, I found a, a healthy balance so far of being 
that person that's not going to take any mess, that person that's going to pop up in their classrooms and make sure they're there, but also that person that's going to check in on them and make sure they're okay, feed them when I need to, make sure they get where they got to go. So, you know, you have to find that balance. And I, I think I'm still, you know, my first year of head coach and I'm still working on finding that balance. Well, you know, if we were to ask every single athlete that come on the show and, and, and everybody turn the TV on, we watching Division One Power Five. It's it's the it's it's what's paying the bills, right? But the reality is, is that there's so many athletes that'll get an opportunity who may not be power five division one. Um tell tell us a little bit about why somebody who's probably on the cusp or just need that opportunity, because there's thousands of athletes out there that need that opportunity just to continue their career to play, to get their education. What what, what, why would you what, why would you sell them on Highland? So I'm a JUCO product, so I can talk to you a hundred times over about what it feels like to actually go through this grind, and everybody doesn't make it out. So for some people, you know, this isn't the right fit. But would you rather go to a Power Five and sit the bench? Or would you rather come to Highland, get you some minutes, and actually go play somewhere after your your one or two years? Um, and I, that was my journey. Like I said, I, I did three years at a JUCO, um, had the opportunity to go to University of Denver. Shout out Coach Woods. I know y'all had her on here, um, but tore my ACL. And so I lost it. So I had to start my journey all the way back over. So I think we're in an era now where kids are like, well, I'm too good to go JUCO. Yes. Uh, okay. Come check your game out. Come, come see what our games really look like. Come see how physical it is. Come see how turned up it is. Like, we have a very huge fan dynamic here. Um, and so football is going to come out in droves. Baseball, softball, volleyball, everybody's going to come out for our games. And not everybody's going to do that at the lower Division One schools. You know, if you're not UConn, if you're not LSU, South Carolina, you might not get to see what that looks like. But we see that every night at Highland. Um, and so if you want to be able to play in an atmosphere where we really have family, where we really have fans that care about us, come to Highland. I wouldn't be like Phil Knight. Come come to Highland. <laughs> if you if you, <laughs> if you if you don't want to coach all on your TikToks. <laughs> Dancing on the stage, all Dancing in the video. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. That is absolutely hilarious. Now, all right, Coach Brock, here we go. This is the time of the show where we get to play a little game called Championship Rounds. All right, Coach, now have you ever played a game called Would You Rather before? Yes, sir. All right, rules are super simple. Both KT and I are going to make a pitch. Whichever one of those pitches you choose, that host gains a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of Championship Rounds. And right now, Coach, Ah, I get, I get, I get, oh, I, get to, you know, you know, yeah, I get to get big. I get to get big on him because he know I'm the defending champion, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, she's like, yeah, whatever. All right, here we go, Coach. Round number one. Would you rather hire a GA, some a player that you know maybe they tore their ACL up, they got zero experience, but you teach them the the blueprints and the fundamentals of becoming a coach. They go on to have tons of success, wins rings, wins championships, and they accredited it all back to you giving them that chance. Or coach a player that you recruited that no one gave them a chance, who makes it to the basketball hall of fame, and then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without you. Kev, I'm going to have to go with you. I love my players. I love I love my players. They're like my little sisters, like my kids now. So I would definitely rather coach a player that makes it to the Hall of Fame. I'm going to give them credit for that one. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you know she can fight. You were scared. That's all that was. I know. It's just that she said the right thing. She said the right thing. It's okay. All right, round number two. Man, she can fight. All right, would you rather yes. travel the world hosting your own food show on ESPNW where you get to pick the brains of other college coaches while eating at their favorite places to eat in the towns that they coach in are or would you rather have Netflix show up on campus Monday morning with a film crew and we're going to film two seasons of Last Chance You right there on your campus and tell everybody that Highland story well I'm a huge Last Chance You fan so I gotta go with Last Chance You I would love for it to be on the show <laughs> Yeah, 
Hey, you see how we do this? Now you get down. Right, well, you could have ate dinner with Don Staley, but I mean, okay. they were all right, but. <laughs> Yeah, uh, all right. Well, well, y'all know what that means. We go into the final third round, which is now the decision round. Let's make it or break it. One of us will win. One of us will cry. Coach, now Kevin and I, we super sneakerheads. As a matter of fact, we go live every Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Y'all need to come hang out with us and check it out. I do a, a segment called The Drop, in which I talk about sneaker releases. That's how much I'm a sneakerhead. Well, before the show, with you not knowing it, we play, We picked a pair of shoes that we thought represents you and your program. So on the count of three, we're going to get you to say, hold that sneaker. And when you do, Kevin and I are going to show you the shoes that we selected for you. Now, keep in mind, you can only select one, and whichever one you select will not only win round three, but they win the championship this week. All right? So, all right, here we go. One, two, three. Hold that sneaker. Ooh, Kev, that's my favorite shoe, man. I gotta go with you. Oh! <laughs> yeah! I love, I love the colors, though. I love the blue and yellow. Ooh, those, and are I, those are my favorites. And I love saying these two words. And new. <laughs> ah. Oh, how I missed you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. Y'all were vibing <laughs> earlier. Oh, oh look wife. at it, Where's your wife at? I need your wife to come on the camera right now and talk about this. We don't do this kind of thing in Louisiana. Listen, she might get on me. I don't know if I won't get problems. I'm going to have to keep her where she at. Hey, Coach, do y'all have, like, metal detectors? Before, they got know? a metal detector. No, no, they got no, a metal detector. Oh, I'm just bring it in. Bring it in. I can just bring the hardware in, B. I'm yeah, good. This time. I ain't got to sneak it around back. I can just bring it to her. Right through the front door. Oh, Kevin, okay, don't you lose don't you lose that belt in the game in the game of pig neither. Don't you lose that <laughs> I'm not I put this belt up. No, no, no. It's not gonna happen. All right, coach. The title of the show, Sports Life Talks, you got next. We talked about the present. We talked about the past. We talked about who you are as a person, but now we got to talk about the elephant in the room, the future. What does the future hold for you, Coach Proctor? And what's up next for you and your program? Listen, hopefully Region 6, Jayhawk Conference Championship, you know, trip to the National Championship, which will be in uh, Joplin, Missouri this year. That's my goal. I need to make it to Joplin before they move the National Championship. So if we can't do it this year, we'll definitely shoot for it for next year. Kevin, can we make it up there to Joplin? Can, can we make it? You me, it? me, you, and this belt, B. Jones. We all going to job. Man. <laughs> Bring the belt. I got the coach. Coffee. He won't have the belt. He ain't gonna have the belt because the next episode, I'm gonna take the belt. No, no, I got the belt it. for this episode, B. Jones. So for her, I will have the belt. I got you. I got, you. I got what you're saying. Yeah. But it, it'll be it'll be my belt by the end. So we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, all, right. Yeah. all right, coach. Real quick, I know that you got some people. Me and Kevin, we know that it takes a village to do this, right? It's not just Coach Sandra Proctor showing up every day making all these decisions and we know you have a big influential part but we also know that there's people around you that are supporting you in every decision you make tell us a little bit about your coaching staff and and, and about uh you got a minute tell us tell us anything you want about your coaching staff and individuals that help you put this this whole dream team together so i actually don't have an assistant coach yet um i am in the final process of hiring somebody um she's a arkansas little rock uh, native so we've had a chance to talk but we haven't had a chance to be able to sit down and kind of do a face-to-face um, but everything, she's a JUCO grad herself, so she understands that grind and she understands what it takes to play at the JUCO level and move on. And I think she'll be a great addition to this program, um, helping myself, helping our players, and definitely helping our post players to be able to make it to the next level. Now, Kevin, Arkansas Little Rock, she can fight. Now that she can oh, no, not B. Jones. <laughs> 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 we don't. Listen. We don't just hush when we go there, Major. They ain't gonna, they not gonna play with us for sure. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. and, and, neither, and neither are we. All right, Coach. So, do you have any shout outs you want to give? I do. Of course, my brother. Um, definitely got to shout him out. Um, you know, through everything, he's always been my number one fan. So, of course, my big brother Pierre. Um, my mentor is actually the head coach of the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands national team. So, Anisha Curry, she's definitely been in my corner, you know, kind of pushing me and guiding me in the right way. So, for sure, shout out to her. Um, my daughters, which they will probably never see this, but I have twin daughters, Kendall and Kennedy. 
Um, I'm thankful that when I got the call about getting this job, like they were the very first people to be in my face. So I not only got to celebrate, you know, with myself and my fiance, but my daughters are running around, jumping, flipping, doing all kinds of crazy. Um, so, you know, without them, I probably would have stepped out of this game a long time ago, but I'm 10 years in, they're 10 years old. So we are gonna keep going with this until the wheels fall off. All right, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. Tell them my story and want you to do the same thing. But that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have next? I'm going to say uh, Erica Harris, head coach over at Moberly. Um, I think, I think she would be a great great addition to the show, and I think she's going to do amazing things at Moberly this year. So I, I would say her. All right, Coach Harris, your ticket just got punched. We can't wait to have you on the show. Come tell us your incredible story. And uh, you're officially on the clock with Coach Sandra Proctor. You got next. You are amazing, Coach. You are sensational. You are a trailblazer. You are an icon. The future is just so bright. Everybody better put on their shades because, hey, you, I got a feeling <laughs> it's some special stuff cooking and brewing over there at Highland. We're going to be there with you step by step. Anything you need, please let us know because, Coach Proctor, you are extraordinary and elite. You deserve a yeet. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. Sports Life Talk Nation, we we appreciate y'all. We thank y'all so much for rocking alongside of us one more time here. We appreciate you rocking alongside of us one more time and doing this thing all over again. It's the best show on the in the world, in my opinion. It's the best job in the world. I get to do it with my homeboy, and uh, we're going to keep doing it. We're not going to stop, y'all. This is season three, and we ain't going to stop until the wheels fall off. And I promise y'all, we got so much more heat coming y'all way. Last chance, don't forget to join the family. Tap in, lock in with us at Sports Life Talk on all your social media platforms. We everywhere. KT's working hard, dropping y'all social media content every single day i promise y'all it's something that's gonna be inspirational we got a newsletter coming so make sure y'all go to our website sltugotnext.com to be a part of sideline past the sports life talk official newsletter which will be an extension of this show we got some cool stuff in the works for y'all tell y'all season four is about to be massive so make sure y'all buckle up for that and then if you want to be on the show while you're on the website go and check us out it's a tab that says nominate so slt you got next.com go to the nominations tab and just tell us a little bit of quick thing about yourself or who you are if it's somebody you know they need to be nominated tell us about them and we're gonna reach out and we're gonna give them an audition to come on our show all right it's just that simple we're gonna try we're gonna give everybody the opportunity that uh that express interest in the show so kevin congratulations Thank I you. can't wait Thank to get up there to Joplin to see the Highlanders play. And uh, KT, get us up out of here, man. Now, I only see them play, but get them lemon pepper wings, B. Jones. You can't forget about those wings. I'm telling you, the lemon pepper wet is something different about them. And she a chef, B, so ooh, I can't wait. But, Coach, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know. And we got your back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach Kevin was texting me while the show. He said he don't believe it's wet. Show, show him that form one more time. Oh no, the, the jumper is crazy. There it is. There it is. B. Jones, you're like the biggest. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Sports Life Talk Nation. We love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Next year.